Hey, what's happening, Brewery Life? Jasper here. Uh, so today is a lucky day for you guys. We're going to be talking about um, the total sales equation and trying to figure out um, the age-old problem of how much yeast do you use. It took me a few years after I started a brewery to track down um, the right information that I wanted to use moving forward consistently that gave me a good uh, product. So if you guys go back and watch my uh, how to do a dilution video by weight. If you watch my last calculation video on slurry density along with uh, this video here today, hopefully it can save you a couple years of headache that I went through um, just trying to find a system that worked for me. At least check out um, that last calculation slurry density video I did because we're going to be referencing that a lot today. So as I mentioned before, I like to do uh, most of my calculations by hand. This is uh, a lot different than some people, but it really gives me a feeling of problem solving, self-reliance, and confidence. Um, there's a lot of ways to do these calculations. I'm not saying this is the only way or the completely uh, perfect way to do them. Um, there's probably the best apps out there that speed up this process tremendously, but this is just a way that I do my uh, calculations that have worked for me. Um, this calcul calculations also assume that we got our slurry density by using a hemocytometer and did our dilutions by weight. Um, there's a bunch of other ways to get your slurry density. You can use um, kind of a, a centrifuge method that does a mass to volume um, comparison. There's a electronic cell counting machines. Um, there's a biomass sensor which senses the capacitance of the slurry. It's uh, kind of the electrical charge of the slurry. A whole yeast cell will hold an electrical charge, whereas if a yeast cell um, has autolyzed, then it won't hold an electrical charge. So there is a bunch of ways to get um, the yeast slurry density besides the hemocytometer. That's just the one uh, we use because it's cheap and effective and you can do your uh, viability counting at the same time you do your, your density. Um, so those are just some things to be aware of as we move this video forward. First thing we need to talk about is just yeast pitching rates. So yeast pitching rates play a huge effect in our brewery of how the beer is fermented and treated. So the one that commonly comes up and people know about is how the yeast pitching rates affect um, our different flavor compounds um, of our beer while it ferments. A really higher yeasting or yeast pitching rate will give us uh, more higher alcohols, more aldehydes, um, a higher pitching rate will lower our fatty acids, lower our, lower our sulfur compounds, lower our esters, which is to be aware about, lower our VDKs, uh, most famous one being diacetyl. You pitch a lot of yeast, it can eat up that diacetyl easier. Um, so the exact opposite would be true if you had um, a lower pitching rate. Um, pitching rate also affects attenuation. Right? If you have a lot of yeast in your beer, it can reach final gravity easier, maybe go under final gravity. If you have a, not a lot of yeast um, in your fermenter, you might never reach final gravity. So pitching rates affect uh, your beer attenuation. Higher yeast pitches will lead to more yeast um, autolyzing, blowing up, releasing lipids into the beer, and therefore lowering your head retention. Higher yeast um, pitching rates can lead to more biological haze. Um, this can be desirable, as we all know these days. Um, a lower pitching rate can lead toward a longer lag time at the beginning of fermentation, therefore leading um, an opportunity for microbial spoilage, because you're not dropping that pH right away with a shorter um, lag time as a normal pitch. So that would be a danger of under pitching your beer. Now beer um, pitching rates also affect processes um, that people don't talk about too much. 
like dropping your cone, my dropping your cone video um, that I did. You might have to drop your cone way more often, wasting more time in the brewery if your pitch is too big. Our yeast harvest can be really affected by pitching rates. If you don't pitch enough, you might not be able to harvest enough yeast um, for your next batch. Um, and then a huge one that uh, I've got questions about quite a bit is filter runs, right? I've ran into breweries that just hate using their filter, hate using their plate and frame filter. Um, I wish I had a centrifuge. If you guys have an extra one, send it my way. But definitely, I know breweries have stopped using their plate and frame filters because they think their filter is a piece of crap. These breweries also do cone to cone transfers, over pitch, over pitch, over pitch. So really, is it the over pitching of the beer that's causing the filter to clog up and be a real pain to run? Um, or is the filter just bad? Usually it's because people aren't counting their yeast with a hemocytometer and pitching the right amount of yeast um, to make a great beer. So let's talk common pitching rates. Uh, for ales, it's pretty standard to do about three quarters of a million to a million cells per milliliter per Play-Doh of gravity. Um, for a lager, you want to bump up your pitch a little bit to about a million and a half viable cells per milliliter per degree Play-Doh. Um, Hefeweizen, interesting notes, like a Weizen beer, um, you want a little more estery. Remember that I said pitching rates affect esters. A higher pitching rate will lower ester production. Well, on your Wisen's beer, um, you should be pitching about a half million cells per milliliter per, to, per degree Play-Doh to help um, boost your esters and give you more uh, some fruity notes. So those are the common pitches that I use and that we'll uh, be using moving forward. So as you guys can probably tell by now, I'm not the greatest talker in the world. I'm not a salesman. Um, I'm not a marketing genius or anything like that. Um, I'm a doer, a.k.a. a brewer. So let's go uh, do something, and I'll show you how to get this job done. Okay, so the total cells needed equation. Um, we're just going to call it uh, TCN moving forward to make it easy on us. Let's check it out. So the total cells needed for a amount of a wort to be fermented is the pitching rate we want to use, uh, the milliliters of how much wort we're going to ferment, and the gravity of that wort in Play-Doh. Pitching rate. I just talked about all the effects pitching rate has um, and some common pitching rate numbers, whether it's three quarters of a million, half a million, one and a half million cells. Um, today we're going to just be looking at an example with a standard ale yeast pitch of a million uh, viable cell, million cells per milliliter per uh, degree Play-Doh. So uh, the total cells needed is pitching rate milliliters Play-Doh. Well, we just got our pitching rate, 1 million cells. So let's stick it in the equation. Boom, one out of three numbers we need done. 33% of the way there. Let's move on. Next is the milliliters of wort we want to use. So let's uh, use a 10 barrel um, example, 10 barrels of wort is what we want to ferment. There's 117,350 milliliters in one barrel of wort. So then this would be our total milliliters of wort we want to ferment. Um, a metric example, they have it a little easier, um, base 10 system. So um, there's 100,000 milliliters in every hectoliter. So if you used 10 hectoliters that you wanted to ferment of wort times 100,000, boom, a million milliliters is, would be your volume that you'd want to uh, put in the equation. So there we go, the total 
uh, cells needed equation. We now are pitching rate as a million cells. We now have our milliliters figured out. We just need to figure out the gravity we want, our Play-Doh. So have you ever heard the expression, life starts at 1060? Let's do that. So 1060, if you remember my trick moving between um, specific gravity and Play-Doh, um, you just divide by 4 or times by 4, depending which way you want to go. So 60 divided by 4 would be a 15. So let's do this example for a 15 Play-Doh wart. Our total cells now we have we can figure out our million cells, our milliliters of wart we want to we want to dose and our Play-Doh of that wart. So this gives us our total needed cells to ferment this wart. Um, the way we want to ferment it is 17 trillion 602 billion 500 million cells needed. So let's move on and I'll show you what to do with this now. How much yeast to use? So let's check out the yeast pitch equation. We're going to do our total cells needed that we just found out over our slurry density. So this was my first video I told you guys to go back and check out. Um, so make sure you do that. But this is how we find our total slurry pitch in grams or milliliters that we need to use for this batch of beer. Um, from that last video, um, you know I like to do my dilutions by weight and the hemocytometer calculation in grams because I like to pitch by weight. We found that the example slurry density was um, 792 million viable cells um, per gram of slurry. So with our uh, slurry pitch equation, we'll take out our total cells needed, which was 17.6 trillion, over our slurry density, which was 792 million cells per gram. And this would give us total milliliters or grams um, that you need to pitch into your beer. This is 22,225.4 grams. Well, that seems like a high number, so it's pretty easy to break that down into pounds. Let's do that first. So we would just take grams. In one pound, there's 454 grams. So just take your grams that you got, divided by 454, and boom, it gives you your total weight of slurry we need to pitch for this 10-barrel batch at 15 um, degrees Play-Doh gravity given that slurry density we found with our hemocytometer. A little easier if you wanted to do it metric you just take the 22,000 um, and divide by a thousand, thousand grams in a kilogram and that would give us 22.2 kilograms of slurry that we would uh, pitch in that 10 barrel batch. So there's some examples of how to find the exact weight of uh, yeast slurry you need to pitch per batch of beer. There you guys go. We answered the age-old question of how much yeast to use. I know it seems like a lot of steps um, and a lot of math, but if you can really uh, nail down this process, it's going to make your beer so much more consistent. It's going to make your brewery process so much more consistent. So I highly recommend um, digging into your yeast pitch um, as much as you can and really honing down on your process. Check out all the videos I've made on it. I've tried to help you guys out as much as I can. Um, if you have any questions, try to leave them down in the comments and I'll answer them the best I can. And until next time, cheers.